Um, so, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Erwan Bous. I'm a postdoc researcher at uh, the uh, University of uh, uh, Tuvin in Vienna, uh, in Austria. This paper is a collaboration also with the University of Rennes and the University Côte d'Azur in France. Um, so this is actually a very good follow-up to the previous presentation, which ended by saying that uh, from a pattern we need to go to a framework. So actually this is uh, part of what we try to do in this, this tool. Uh, although our pattern is quite different from the uh, previous paper, but uh, this is uh, about the implementation of what we, we did there. So I will start with a bit of uh, context on the observations we made. So here at SLE it's quite easy for me to say that well, we have lots of language arguments uh, nowadays that work pretty well to define languages and especially domain-specific um, modeling languages. And um, in particular, what is very, um, what is working extremely well nowadays is the definition of uh, syntactical services or services for editing our models. Um, nowadays, you very rarely have to, um, very rarely have to um, create your editor or parser or syntax editor from scratch. You use a framework such as Xtext or Sirius. Uh, such as is shown uh, here, the Xtext here is serious, uh, to obtain very quickly, very powerful editors. And uh, yeah, so basically we managed to capitalize a lot of logic of all of these, or all of the such components among any kind of languages. Uh, going even further, there is um, an ongoing work on a so-called language server protocol by some big actors such as Red Hat or Microsoft um, for a standard way to uh, interact with such syntactic services. So this is very in a very good shape, I would say. Uh, so the question that we have, and that is uh, similar to the, the context of the previous presentation, what about runtime services? What, um, what about interacting with the, uh, interacting or observing the execution of uh, our models that are executable? Uh, so for instance, uh, the basic thing we want is debugging, uh, an interactive debugger, the same way we have the one uh, the debugger from, from Java with a manage management of a stack, with a uh, view of the variables, uh, a representation of the execution state by highlighting elements, or other act uh, runtime activities such as execution trace management. Um, so the same way we did, s this was achieved for syntactic services, the question is how to capitalize the logic of runtime services um, in two different aspects. So our research question is basically, uh, among different languages, so we don't want to re-implement a complete debugger for a new uh, DSML, and also among different uh, metaprogramming approaches used to define the semantics, and in this case I talk about operational semantics, of, langu of languages. So for instance, if we use a different model transformation language to implement our semantics, can we still reuse runtime services or debuggers or whatever? So to answer these questions, so we developed a framework that is a framework of uh, a language workbench that is called the GMOC Studio. So this is a GMOC Studio execution framework. So the, as a language workbench, the GMOC Studio, um, uh, the idea is that you define your abstract syntax using ECOR, so it's based on uh, EMF. This is uh, the main um, dependency that we have. Uh, you can define the concrete syntax using Sirius or Xtext, uh, and most importantly, you define your personal semantics and here we, uh, we try to be as independent as possible from the metaprogramming approach used for this part. Uh, so this can be pure Java, EMF, it can be another model transformation language, anything that is currently uh, supported in the uh, workbench. And once the language has been defined, we compile it into an interpreter that we can deploy in a so-called modeling workbench, and there we would use the interpreter to execute our model, to visualize it, and to interact with it. And here, so uh, the main, uh, the core idea here of what we did is here in blue, we have the metaprogramming approach that was chosen. And for each metaprogramming approach, we propose to define a so-called execution engine that will basically uh, encompass the uh, interpreter like this and act as uh, a way to interact in a generic way with the interpreter. And thereby the different runtime uh, services provided as add-ons, which are in green here, can interact in a generic way with the interpreter following this pattern. And in this case, uh, the interpreter can follow any kind of design pattern in terms of implement implementation. Uh, it can be simply a, a while loop uh, that changes the, the execution state, or it can be a visitor pattern. Uh, in our case, this, uh, this doesn't matter. Um, here, and to implement all of these interactions in a generic way, or to, to, to define how they work, we, have we provide a framework which define interp uh, interfaces and clusters such as iExecutionEngine, iExecutionAddon, 
or abstract classes to facilitate the, the, the code. And the core mechanism here is that the execution engines have the obligation to send notifications to uh, the add-ons to tell them I am starting an execution step, I am ending an execution step, and so on. And the add-ons can access the running model to uh, change or observe what is happening. So it can be used to implement uh, monitors, for instance. Um, and um, these notification, uh, the ways notifications are sent still has to be specified in the interpreter. You need to specify what is an execution step from the perspective of your language. Still. Um, so using this framework, we implemented a bunch of engines and add-ons, but many more could be implemented. Uh, we implemented a Java-based execution engine for Java-based semantics, uh, XMOF-based for XMOF-based uh, semantics based on FUML. Uh, each time we have add-ons that are more and more, uh, that are compatible or not with the language because they are relevant or not for depending on the metaprogramming approach that has been uh, chosen. For instance, if we use uh, another engine ba that considers semantics expressed using a pair of languages, Java and MockML, here we express concurrency in ex an explicit way, and we have add-ons that are really made for working with concurrency. And we have a last engine for um, heterogeneous execution of uh, models. That unfortunately I won't have time to, to show here. So now I will try to make a quick uh, demo of uh, all of this, with the uh, few time that I have remaining. Um, so, you can see, it's a bit blurry, but I hope it's uh, enough. So I will show uh, three, at least two examples of languages, um, each made using a different model transformation language to implement the semantics. So I will start with a small language to define uh, programs for Arduinos. Uh, so to illustrate this, I will start by showing you the um, abstract syntax of, of the language. So in this case, since it's based on, uh, as I've said, it's based on EMF, so the abstraction task, the abstraction task is expressed using eCore. And uh, we define basically that an Arduino model in this case is uh, composed of two things. So we have a board, which is expresses the hardware part of the Arduino, and we have sketches, which is basically a, a simple programming languages to express what we want to do with the Arduino board. So here we have repeat, while, if, controls, and on the Arduino side, we have pins uh, and modules that can be put into the pins. So this is for the purely uh, abstract syntax part. And we define the interpreter uh, here as pure Java-based semantics. So here I say Java-based, but actually it's developed using Xtend, uh, which is already a huge bunch of uh, syntactic sugar over Java. Uh, and even more, we use an extension to Xtend, which is uh, Kermita nowadays, uh, Kermita 3. Uh, that allows us to very easily, for instance, declare that an execution rule will, be, will consist in an execution step. So by annotating execution rules, we know what will lead to execution steps, and this will generate automatic code that will uh, in send notifications to the runtime elements. So I don't have time to go into the details of the, the, the semantics, so I will now move to a second um, workbench, which is here in this case a modeling workbench where we um, deployed our languages. And I will open uh, an Arduino model here that we will execute using this interpreter. Okay. All right. So we have all what, I've, uh, what I haven't shown is that we also define the, sy the concrete syntax of the language, of course. And here uh, we see the two parts. We see the board definition on the on the left, and we see the model to execute on the right. With different conditions. So now I will execute uh, the model, and we will see in action uh, the interaction between the execution engine or Java-based semantics and the runtime add-ons that are provided in the Gmox Studio. So here we started an execution that was paused at the at the very beginning, and we already have a bunch of runtime add-ons that are loaded. So here we see the the model here. Here we have a stack of the execution steps that are currently being run. We have a view of the dynamic information here. And uh, we have a representation of the execution trace that we are building at the same time. So to show a bit more what it, how it looks like, I will put a breakpoint uh, in the model here. Like that. And I will resume the execution. And we can see that an execution trace is being built here while the execution occurs. So we have a new execution state there. The runtime data on the top right corner changed, uh, and we have animation here uh, by highlighting the, uh, the, the current part of the model that we're executing. 
So what is very important here is that all these components, these runtime components, so the, the, the debugger here with the stack and the variable view, and the execution trace management here are completely independent from the DSML. You can use it completely out of the box, off the shelf, uh, for any DSML that you implement in the, in the studio. And, um, and what I haven't shown also is that we also not only have a debugger working out of the box, but also an omniscient debugger, which means that I can go back into a previous state in time. We see again the stack being updated, the state uh, in the model being updated, and I can go forward again, and so on, and so on. And uh, I could resume the complete execution here, and we would com keep executing our model and construct a trace. Uh, and I'm only showing here a subset of the runtime add-ons that we have available. So I don't have time to, to go further. So just to let you know the part about the omniscient debugging, uh, it was a paper that I did last year. And uh, the part about execution trace management was an ESMSA paper um, two years ago. Don't hesitate to check it out if you want to know more. So this was for this Arduino language based using Java-based semantics. I will very quickly move to a second uh, language, uh, which is a very much simpler one based on uh, Petrinet. So it's a Petrinet language. I will show it uh, very quickly. I don't know how much time I have. Two minutes, sorry. Thank you. Um, so I will only show two languages. I don't have time to show three. Uh, so uh, this Petrinet language, again, we have an, an abstract syntax using ECOR. So here only three classes with places and transitions. But this time it's very different regarding the semantics because they were implemented. If we open it here. So the semantics here, uh, in this case, the semantics look like that. The semantics are using XMORPH, which is a model transformation language based on FUML. So in this case, the semantics are expressed using activity diagrams. So we change our paradigm, we change, we have a graphical syntax, completely different way to define the semantics. Uh, and uh, we could have done it in Java, but in this case, it's done with, uh, with XMORPH. And I will move to the modeling more bench once again. I will open Petrinet, which is right here. Here we go. So sorry, it's a bit uh, messy. Uh, it's a Petrinet to show to that illustrates a very simple multi-threaded processor. And I will run this Petrinet using the XMorph engine uh, of the GMorph Studio. So the same thing happens here. And what happens is uh, we have exactly the same runtime components as before. So the debugger here, the stack view, the variable view, also the execution trace, I forgot to say here. All these components are the same code running, but for a different language that was implemented using a different language for the semantics as well. And we have the same facilities. I can do step into, step over, whatever. And the animation shows the passing of tokens among the places. And everything works exactly uh, the same. So I won't have time to show the third language and the third metaprogramming approach, uh, which was uh, concurrency-based, but um, if you want to talk about it offline, uh, I'm here still today and tomorrow. Um, so to conclude, so the observation is that um, syntactic services are in a very good shape nowadays. We still have some work to do to have generic runtime services. Uh, our proposal is a framework to integrate in a generic way uh, runtime services in an independently from metaprogramming approaches and DSMLs. Um, just about the GMOC Studio, very quickly, a few words. No, now it's part of the uh, an Eclipse Research Consortium uh, uh, called GMOC, uh, likewise, uh, to sustain the GMOC Studio as a research platform to experiment on model execution, heter heterogeneous model execution as well. Um, so uh, this means that contributors are very welcome if anyone wants to implement uh, an engine for a new metaprogramming approach, like a new meta uh, model transformation language, we are very uh, open to discussions and uh, don't hesitate to check it out because all the source is on uh, GitHub. Thank you very much for your attention.
Okay, so um, basically what we tried to do is, so it was in our SLE paper last year on, on debugging, what we tried to do is to, these concepts that are maybe more from the community of imperative-based debugging, we try to give them a meaning in a completely general sense for any kind of language, whether imperative or declarative or uh, whichever, uh, both regarding what is an, a stack, a step, a state, uh, a breakpoint, uh, and this is what we rely upon here. So we consider that an execution step is a change in the execution state. And whichever the way the interpreter is implemented, it will change the state during the execution. And if a change is within a change is within a change, so a step within a step within a step, then we consider that we have something that is a stack. So we provide a stack. And this could be the case even for an interpreter for functional languages, where I evaluate uh, my function that I execute, in which I will ex evaluate uh, one part, one subset of the code inside my function, and so on. And we consider that we could see a stack where we usually don't see one, even in declarative contexts, depending on how the interpreter is structured and implemented, so the se how the semantics are. are uh, in terms of generic... So we, the only generic debugging concepts that we considered are these ones, so the ones we see traditionally in a Java debugger, we could extend with more, try to uh, try pick other debugging concepts from other worlds, try to, make, to generalize them once again to the concept of executable models, and, uh, and provide them as uh, inside our debugger. But so far, they have different figure. Yeah. And we could also use our approach to define add-ons that are, even though our bus, our communication bus is generic, we can also implement domain-specific add-ons for our languages. So if one wants to define a very domain-specific debugger for his language, our uh, framework also provides it. He simply doesn't use the off-the-shelf debugger that we have, simply writes his own for his language. Okay. Thank you.